Hello Elisa, how are you today? Hello Pari. I am doing pretty well. How are you? Oh, I'd say I'm doing pretty well. Say, can I ask you a question? Well, sure. I don't see why not. Have you ever made a beautiful painting? That is an odd question, but I suppose I did paint some pictures when I was younger that could be considered pretty. I see. Do you by chance know what 456 times 6.2 equals? Gee, I don't. I'm not very good at math. Okay. Have you ever written poetry? I did during my college days. Not that they were any good. Haha. <laughs> All right. I have one more question. What is the molecular formula of glucose? I have no idea. Pari, why are you asking me these things? Well, I am trying to determine if you are a person or a computer. What? Of course I am a person. How can I know that for sure? I am standing right in front of you. You can plainly see that I am a person. But we cannot judge something or someone simply by their looks. Fair enough. But we are having a conversation. Surely what we are saying can lead you to believe I am 100% human. Ah, but that's the key question. Can't I tell, just by speaking to you, if you are man or a machine? You could be a robot crafted to look, sound, and act like any normal person. You could even think like a person. Pari, that is ridiculous. Of course a machine cannot think like a person. Well, Eliza, that is actually a question many philosophers have pondered. A man named Alan Turing once proposed a test that could determine if machines can truly think. What sort of a test could determine that? Well, that is the exact problem Turing had. Though he devised a test called the imitation game, he was not sure whether it could definitively answer if machines can think. What is the imitation game? In the original setup, a man, a woman, and an interrogator would sit out of sight from each other. The man and the woman would both try to convince the interrogator they were the opposite gender. Turing proposed a similar game for machines, in which a man and a computer would try, simply through speech, to convince an interrogator that they're human and the other is not. Well, couldn't the interrogator just tell by voice who is a man and who is not? That is one of the problems the machine would try to overcome. However, it is more important for the machine to prove it is human than to try and prove that the man is a machine. Okay. That makes sense. How would such a test be done? The interrogator would ask a series of questions to each of the contestants in the game, much like the questions I asked you earlier in our conversation. Based on the answers to these, they would guess which contestant was a person and which was a computer. But how does this prove that the machine can think? If the computer were to win the game, wouldn't it just prove that it can convince another that it is a human? Why, Eliza, you have hit the nail right on the head. That is the main issue with Turing's test. On top of that, it would seem the odds are fundamentally against the machine. It would be very hard for the machine to describe a painting it had made, or write a poem, or even be in love. Precisely. However, some humans may not be able to do those things despite the exposure to stimuli they have experienced. But the key argument here is that a computer cannot do the things you mentioned because they are not capable of originality. That makes sense. Surely there are some other problems with the test as well? Why, of course. Turing himself pointed out six major objections to the idea that computers can think. The first is known as the theological objection, which states that thinking is a function of man's immortal soul. A soul that can only be provided by God. So if a computer were able to think like any human, it would go against accepted religion? Yes. The second objection is known as head in the sand, which states that the thought of a machine being able to truly think scares people so much that they would prefer to pretend it is simply impossible. Well that sure sounds silly. What is the third objection? That would be the argument from consciousness which says the only way one can ever know if a machine can think is to be a machine and feel the thoughts. That would certainly be interesting. The fourth objection involves disabilities, such as all the things computers could surely never be able to do. Like paint and compose poems in love? Exactly. Then there is Lady Lovelace's objection. This states a machine would never be able to produce a new, original work, just as we discussed before. Well surely scientists would be able to make a machine that could do that. Maybe someday, but not yet. 
I will get back to this later. First I must tell you the final objection. All right, what is it? The argument for the informality of behavior. This means that a computer can only do what it is programmed to do. If it encounters a situation it is not prepared for, it will not be able to act. Therefore it can never truly think. What do you mean? I mean a computer lacks critical thinking skills. For example, when you hear a fire alarm you know you must exit a building. Therefore, if a computer hears a fire alarm it knows it must exit the building. I am following you so far. But what if the fire alarm in the building went off and at the same time a voice announced over a loudspeaker that there has been a malfunction and no one is to exit the building? Well I guess I would listen to the voice, but be sure to look out for any smoke or other signs of a fire. Right. But the machine would not know what to do. It cannot both exit and not exit a building, and its conflicting programming would render it useless in such a situation. Ah, I see. Well this sure has been an interesting conversation. I never though before if machines can think. Say, what did you say earlier when you mentioned that computers are not yet capable of original thought? I simply meant that while it is not yet possible engineers and computer programmers are working on this. In fact, every year a contest for the Loebner Prize is held in which great technological minds design machines and attempt to pass the Turing test with a conversation. That's so cool. Have any of the machines ever passed? Not exactly, though some have come close enough to win minor prizes. Wow, I would love to see what the scientists have in mind for the future. Say, Pari, have I convinced you? Whatever do you mean, Eliza? I have been the one teaching you all about the Turing test. Whatever could you have to convince me of? Silly Pari, was I able to convince you that I am a human?